Welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 5, where we will review how to prepare an ASPE, or ASPE, Statement of Retained Earnings, and an IFRS, Statement of Changes in Equity. There are two learning objectives for this tutorial. One is to prepare an ASPE, Retained Earnings Statement, and two, to prepare an IFRS, Statement of Changes in Equity. This tutorial is based on the Endeavor Corporation B example, so make sure that you download the related file so you can follow along. We will now proceed with requirement one of our Endeavor Corporation example, and that's to prepare an ASPE retained earnings statement, also known as an ASPE statement of retained earnings. Both are acceptable. We begin with identifying the correct title for an ASPE retained earnings statement or statement of retained earnings. We always begin with the full name of the company, so Endeavor Corporation, Statement of Retained Earnings, or Retained Earnings Statement, either is acceptable, followed by the period, so this statement covers the year ended December 31st, 2020, and our scale is in thousands. Then we begin with step one, which is reporting what our beginning balance is at the beginning of the year, so at January 1st, our beginning retained earnings balance is $9,865,000. The next step is to make sure that any adjustments related to prior years are corrected against the beginning retained earnings balance. In our Endeavor example, there are two corrections that must be made. First, there is a cumulative effect of the change in inventory policy from FIFO to weighted average, and that was determined to be $1.6 million on a before-tax basis. So this policy change would have resulted in $1.6 million higher uh, income before tax in prior years. All adjustments to retained earnings must be presented net of tax. So with a 35% tax rate, the applicable tax on this $1.6 million adjustment to beginning retained earnings is 560,000, resulting in a net change to prior periods of 1,040,000. And we make these corrections to retained earnings here because we cannot go back and reopen previous accounting periods. The second correction we have to make is related to an overstatement of net income from a prior period due to an error uh, recording prepaid advertising. This means that the advertising should have been expensed but was instead classified as a prepaid resulting in prior year income being higher than it should have been by $1.2 million before tax. So at 35%, we have a tax adjustment to 420,000, resulting in a net after-tax adjustment to retained earnings of negative $780,000. So this state, the, the classification of the advertising should have been expensed and that would uh, reduce our income by a net uh, after-tax of $780,000. If you are curious as to what the journal entries for these corrections would look like, they are presented in the blue shaded areas. Beginning inventory would be debited by $1.6 million. Income tax payable would be credited by $560,000 with the balance being credited to retained earnings for $1,040,000. For the prepaid advertising error, we would credit a prepaid advertising in the amount of $1.2 million and debit retained earnings for the after-tax portion of $780,000 and debit the income tax payable or receivable if a refund were in order for $420,000. Step three is to present the restated opening balance of retained earnings. With the beginning balance as reported of $9,865,000, adjusting for the two corrections to beginning retained earnings, results in a new restated balance of $10,125,000. Then we add any net income or subtract any losses, if that's the case. Now recall from our Endeavor A example that we had used in previous tutorials, the net income was $3,389,000, and so we haven't changed any of that to maintain consistency amongst the tutorials. Step five includes deducting all dividends declared, and that's regardless of whether or not they are paid. In our case here, there was a common stock dividend of 160000 and a cash dividend for both preferred and common shares of $61,000, resulting in total dividends declared of 221000 
Now, the calculation to support these dividends here is as follows. So for the stock dividends, remember that there were originally 120,000 shares, and then there were 20,000 repurchased. So that's what gives us this 100,000 common shares. We multiply by 10% stock dividend times $16, which was the value of the shares at the time of the dividend declaration, gives us 160,000. Remember, these are all in thousands. Then when it comes to the cash dividends, we have uh, two. There's a preferred dividend and a common dividend. The preferred share dividend is simply 50,000 preferred shares times a dollar, which is the dividend amount paid on those. So that would be $50,000. And then there's this 110,000 common shares. So going back to this calculation up here, our 120,000 original shares minus the 20,000 purchased times 10% which resulted in the issue of an additional 10,000 shares now equals 110,000 common shares. And that's how that number comes. And the dividend paid per share is 10 cents. So that's 61,000 in total dividends between preferred and common. The journal entry is in the blue shaded area up here. So we will debit retained earnings for 160,000 and credit common shares for the stock dividend. And for the cash dividends, we will uh, debit retained earnings for a total of 61,000 and credit individually preferred dividends payable for 50,000 and common share dividends payable for 11,000. And finally, the last step is to calculate the ending balance. So if we go from our beginning 9,865 opening plus the effect of the change in policy minus the uh, overstatement of income due to the error gave us a beginning restated balance of 10125 We added the net income of 3389 and then subtracted all of our dividends. And so this gives us a balance in retained earnings at the end of the year of 13293000 Here all we have is our clean statement now with no markings. And uh, this is a completed statement of retained earnings for Endeavor Corporation reported under ASPE. Now please make sure that you can trace back all of the calculations to the original data and make sure that you're comfortable with how the statement of retained earnings was prepared and presented. This will help you before moving on to the IFRS statement of changes in equity. Now we will proceed with requirement two, which is to prepare an IFRS statement of changes in equity. Before preparing the statement, we've included the additional information that was provided with the original data and used to prepare a partial balance sheet for the shareholders equity section as at December 31st, 2019. So this is the previous year. This is required because we will see that these are the accounts that have to be included in the statement of changes in equity. So in order for us to do this properly, we need to know what the opening balances are. Based on the information that we had, the shareholders' equity at December 31st, 2019, consisted of 42,000 issued preferred shares that pay a $1 dividend, and that had a total paid in capital value of 150,000. Again, our scale is in thousands. At the beginning of the year, there were 120,000 common shares issued and outstanding with a paid in capital value of 1.2 million. And there was a contributed surplus balance that arose from a previous common share repurchase and cancellation. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this just in a bit. Suffice it to say that this has a balance of 23000 And so our total contributed capital is $1,373,000. This is also can be called paid-in capital. Both of these terms are acceptable. Paid-in capital is used more commonly. The beginning balance and retained earnings was 9865000 and there is a new thing here that we didn't have in the ASPE statement of retained earnings, the accumulated other comprehensive income, also known as AOCI. This has a balance of $580,000. So now we can begin the preparation of the Endeavor Corporation IFRS Statement of Changes in Equity. You've probably noticed that the title is different for this statement, and that's what it is for under IFRS. It is not a retained earnings statement. It is a statement of changes in equity. It does cover the same period for the year ended December 31st, 2020, and the scales in thousands. Now, what separates the statement of changes in equity from the statement of retained earnings is that IFRS requires a full reconciliation of all equity accounts from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Whereas the retained earnings statement 
under ASPE only presents the change from beginning to end of year for retained earnings. So we have six columns presented here, one for each of the equity accounts and one for a total. So there are five equity accounts. And if you refer back to the previous slide, these will come from the opening partial balance sheet. So we had preferred shares, common shares, contributed surplus, retained earnings, and AOCI, and a total column. The first step is exactly the same as when we prepared an ASPE statement of retained earnings, where we begin with the reported balance at the beginning of the year, but this time we report all the beginning balances for all accounts in the equity section. So when we did the ASPE statement of retained earnings, all we had to do was basically this one column here, but now under IFRS, we have to reconcile all the accounts. So the beginning balances include the 150,000 in preferred share value, 1.2 million common share, share, 23,000 contributed surplus, of course the retained earnings of 9.865 million, and the accumulated other comprehensive income, we can also call that AOCI, and the total was 11,818,000, and you can confirm this by just going back a couple of slides to the partial balance sheet, and that was the total equity. Then, as with the ASPE statement of retained earnings, we show adjustments to the beginning retained earnings for any prior year changes, errors, policy changes, etc. And um, the only place you'll see adjustments is to retained earnings. We don't have prior period adjustments for common shares, contributed surplus, etc. So uh, we still end up with reporting a uh, restated balance and we end up doing it for all accounts because it just makes our statement look nice and clean. So for these items, the restated balance is the same as the opening balance as reported. The only difference is with retained earnings. And then with our total column, we can now sum horizontally and vertically. So 11,818 plus the cumulative changes should give us 12,087. And if we add the restated opening balances, horizontally, we arrive at the same number. So 12,078,000 is what the restated opening balance in total should be. This slide here simply highlights the changes related to IFRS versus what we saw with the retained earnings statement under ASPE. So these uh, items in the red boxes did not exist before and these are new. Next, as with the retained earnings statement under ASPE, we add any net income or subtract any net losses. So for our Endeavor example, we had net income of 3,389,000, and that's adjusted in two spots here, to our retained earnings and also to the total to make sure that we still continue to balance. Now the next item is where we see a little bit of change from the ASPE statement of retained earnings. Because we are reporting under IFRS in this example, you may recall in earlier tutorials when we prepared an IFRS statement of comprehensive income for Endeavor, there was other comprehensive income or OCI of 1,257,000. So that did not appear under the ASPE statement of retained earnings because we don't include OCI in the ASPE income statement but it is included here. It is not adjusted to retained earnings. It's related specifically to other comprehensive income. And so that's why we keep a separate account for it. And in order to make sure our statement balances, we must also include it in the total column. Now we can deal with some of the other additional information that was presented specifically. There was an issue of preferred shares and a repurchase of common shares. These items are not included in retained earnings and therefore not included in the statement of retained earnings because share purchases, at least in this example, do not affect retained earnings. Uh, later on in the course, you'll see a situation where it does, but in this case, it hasn't. Shares uh, that are issued uh, do not affect retained earnings either. In our example here, per additional information number one, there were 8,000 preferred shares issued at $3 per share. So we add $24,000 to the preferred share value and also to the total. And per additional information two, there were 20,000 common shares repurchased for $11. Now, 20,000 shares at $11 is 220,000. And if we look at these here, the sum of the $200,000 in the common share column plus the $20,000 that you'll see here in the contributed surplus column does equal $220,000. And that's reported in the total column here. 
because the data indicates that the shares are originally issued at $10 a share, the amount that we remove from the common shares is not the $11 that the shares repurchased for, but at their original average issue price. So 20,000 shares times an original price of $10 is 200,000. And then the balance or the premium of $1 that's paid over and above the original issue price minus the $10 original issue is a $1 premium and that times 20,000 shares is the amount that is adjusted to the contributed surplus balance. And in the case where we purchase shares for less than the original value, you'll see later on in the course, we use up any existing contributed surplus amount first and then deal with any residual balance later on. So we don't need to worry about it at this point, but suffice it to say that uh, we are adjusting 20,000 to contributed surplus based on the difference between the average issue price and the amount that was paid. And so that's how we end up uh, reconciling the 220,000 paid to repurchase those shares. And next we have those uh, stock dividends that were declared and distributed. Even if they were not distributed, they'd be included here as well. So the stock dividend and the cash dividend of common and preferred shares for 61,000. So these two line items are the same as presented under ASPE. And the journal entry to record them was uh, also shown. Now notice here that the total column does not include this $160,000 related to the stock dividend. And that's because, as we discussed earlier, stock dividends represent a shift of capital from retained earnings to common shares. So here, the common shares goes up by 160,000. And then uh, on this side here, the retaining earnings drops by 160,000. So there is no uh, impact on the total equity. The only impact on equity, it relates to cash dividends for both common and preferred shares. Then the final step is to add up all of the columns, resulting in a new preferred share balance at the end of the year of 174,000, common shares of 1,160,000, contributed surplus has $3,000 left in there, the retained earnings, 13,293,000, and recall that this is the same as ASPE, statement of uh, retained earnings. And finally, the revised accumulated OCI balance of 1,837 that consists of the beginning balance that was given plus the uh, OCI that was re related to some of those items from the earlier tutorials and that results in 16,467,000 in ending equity and that adds up horizontally. You also want to check that this adds up vertically as well. This panel just shows how the retained earnings statement balance uh, on the statement of changes in equity is the same as what we saw with the ASPE a retained earnings statement. And finally, this is just a clean, completed IFRS statement of changes in equity. So please make sure that you're able to follow the calculations and tie any numbers back to the original data as necessary. So now we can recap just some of the key points to remember. First, ASPE reports a statement of retained earnings or retained earnings statement. IFRS reports a statement of changes in equity. And the difference between them is that the IFRS requires a full reconciliation of all equity accounts from beginning to end of the year. Finally, both methods must report restated opening balances if there are any adjustments that are related to prior periods. And those adjustments are made to retained earnings and they are reported net of tax. This concludes tutorial five. We hope you found it useful.